The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. Yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Though my tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. Amen. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you, Lord. Where's the joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I cannot see you with my eyes, but faith arise to you. When I cannot feel your hand in mine, but faith arise in you. God of mercy and love, I will praise you, Lord. Yes. Oh, you shine with glory, Lord of light, I feel alive with you. And your presence now, I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say, I will praise you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness I'll dance, in the shadows I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Soul is 
I will. 
Say this with me. God says, I can make your life better. Do you believe that? Then we ought to say it like we mean it, okay? Here we go, one more time. God says, I can make your life better. I found something on Google that, you know, everything on Google is true, true, right? Yeah, right, okay. This is what I found on Google. In reality, status, designer products, and expensive items are worth nothing. Well, I almost said a woo-hoo and an amen when I read that. They won't make your life happy nor healthy. So regardless of where you are in the world, the most important things on your list of what's important should include the following. Now, this is Google. I just, I just randomly said, what things will make your life better? I didn't even say God. I just, what things will make your life better? Man, there were a lot of responses. And many of them had the, this list of nine things. Number one, health. Well, right now, that's probably the number one thing. We want health. Number two, family. You might agree with that one, family. Number three, friends. Number four, love. Number five is passion. Passion. Then there were four more. Education was very important. Seven was time. Number eight is water. I'm really glad they added number nine because I don't know that I could have anything less important, food. But the question that God asked, even though he's made this statement, God says that I could make your life better. He asked a question today. He asks, what is the most important thing in your life? All right, Mark. 12, 28 to 34. Let's read this. I know that's about three or four slides, but I think we can, we can do this together. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important is this. Listen. Oh, that's what we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. God says, and the response to God says is, hear God. So Jesus replies, and he said, this, the, the, the greatest is, listen. Where'd I go? There we go. Listen, O Lord. The Lord our God is one and is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your, your strength. The second is equally important. Have you ever noticed that? 
Second is what we've often thought that this is the second commandment, but Jesus makes this as important as the first one. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The teacher of religious law replied, well said, teacher, you've spoken the truth by saying that there is only one God and no wonder, no other. And I know it is important to, to love him with all my heart and all my understanding and all my strength and to love my neighbor as myself. This is more important than to offer all the bird offerings and sacrifices required in the law. Realizing how much the man understood, Jesus said to him, now catch what Jesus says to him. You are not far from the kingdom of God. You see, understanding and being able to say it back did not help this man finally take the step into the kingdom of God. Why? Because he did not own Jesus in his life. He only, only saw Jesus as the man who understood what, what the law was about in Jesus. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Now, I'm just going to say, y'all, a lot of you may know Jesus. You may know him. You, you may have been to church every Sunday. You may have been to church a lot of Sundays. You may have given your tithe, all of that kind of stuff. You may have just been regular around whatever church you're at, but it doesn't mean that you know Jesus. Because knowing Jesus is to live loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that isn't even the end of it. The rest of it goes that you love your neighbor as yourself. Well, how well do you love yourself? And how well do you love your neighbor? Do you love yourself enough that you want them to have what you have? Do you want them to know Jesus as you know Jesus? That's the key. We love God with everything that we have, and we love our neighbor with all that we have in us through Jesus. So does that mean we can leave our neighbors alone? Does that mean that we don't have to say anything to that? Does that mean that that guy at, that, at work is a, who's a real jerk, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't want to have anything to do with? Or that person that just seems to be needy all the time? And we don't know how to help them? Sometimes we run up against a wall and we need help. But when... Through Jesus, he says to you, I want you to go talk to them. I want you to share with them, Jesus. Or I want you to share with them what, what I mean to you. We don't let anything get in the way of being obedient. We don't let anything get in the way of sharing, showing our love. There was a pastor who once talked about an observation that he made when he he went to the local nursing home. Several of his members in the church were in that nursing home. And as he met, met on, with them on a biweekly basis, he asked the group of people, how many boxes would it take to fill up those boxes with the things that they owned in their room? How many boxes would it take to pack it all up? He gave them some time to think about it. And then he said, of all the folks I visited in a nursing home, I'm pretty sure that everything they owned, everything they had with them could fit into one box. Now, I'm not talking about retirement centers. I'm talking about nursing homes. They're just dinky little things, and you're lucky to have a few pictures and books and stuff like that. They did have a few photos of their family and pictures drawn by the grandkids or great-grandkids, their favorite book, their Bible, a few other small things. The most important things that they possessed was in their room. Then he said, it's funny. We spend most of our time filling our lives with all kinds of things, some good, some bad, 
some helpful, some harmful, some that reflect our love of God and some that are just the opposite. But you know what? There will come a time when we have to decide what is most important. There will come a time when God is going to ask us to take an inventory of what we are putting in our box and ask us, is this what Jesus said was the most important thing in his life? Is this how Jesus lived? Then he says this one last thing. Right now, God is asking, what's the most important thing in your life? If it's not marching, if it's not matching the life and teachings of Jesus, God is asking us to take it out of the box and replace it. And then I wrote following that story. That's a pretty tough request because the things we put in that box are special and they're dear to us. There's a reason I'm a pastor in the church of the Nazarene. There's a reason why I'm a member of the church of the Nazarene. We don't believe that God asks us to do the tough things of faith and then just leaves us to struggle. We believe God is constantly helping us to grow to become more like Jesus. And we believe that God is constantly helping us grow in our relationship with Jesus. Right here, right now, the Holy Spirit is with us. God will help us fill our box with the most important thing. Let me ask you a few more questions. Is this what you want? God asked a few more questions. Is this what you want your wife or husband's most important thing to be? So when we live as a team, what's the most important thing in their lives? And you've noticed it. Have you ever sat your wife or husband or your kids or your friends down and say, I had to ask this question of myself, the most important thing. I love you. And I want you to be as close to Jesus as possible. You're not there to preach at him. You're just there to help him. What are the most important things in your life? Is that what Jesus would have you do? Now you say, I can't really ask that question because that will begin an argument that will take away from everything. Well, I want to ask you a question. Would you rather be able to talk about this now? And let that person live the rest of their lives and finally make, come to that door called death and find out that in eternity what they thought was most important wasn't. See, I think it's important that we help one another find a place where we can Become more like Jesus because it's not becoming more like me. It's not Shelly becoming more like me or me becoming more like Shelly. As we grow together, we become more together. We we are more in the sink at the same. Sometimes we wear the same color clothes. That happens when you get older. I know what she's thinking sometimes. She always knows what I'm thinking. But there comes a time when we have to reach the place where these important questions help us in our relationship with God. Second question that God asks is, is this this what you want to be the most important thing in your kids' lives? You can ask them that question. doesn't matter how old they are. What's the most important thing to you? And you have opportunity to share with them you're not, you're not telling them. You're not preaching at them. You're just, you're just saying, I had to answer that question for myself. Maybe it's just been recently or maybe it was a long time ago. But you share with your kids what the most important thing is in your life. And if it's anything less than Jesus, loving Jesus with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself, if love isn't the, the key, the most important thing in your life or in their lives, Well, you have a lot of praying to do and you have a whole lot of 
influence that you have to give to those people to let them know how important love is. And then the final thing that God asks is, where am I in all of this, God asks? Where am I in your life? Where am I in your spouse's life? Where am I in your children's life? Where am I in your neighbor's life? Where am I in your friend's life? That's God asking them that question. You want to share with them about the, 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 the love of Jesus? You answer this question for yourself, and then you give this question to them. They may, they may not do anything with it, but if you, if you plant that seed, the Holy Spirit will have a whole lot of time to work in their own lives. 80% of all people who come to know Jesus, who make a decision for Jesus, made it before their 12th birthday. Did you know that? Of all the Christians that they polled, 80% of them said they came to know Jesus as a child. We are three to four generations removed from children and teenagers knowing the stories of the Bible. Did you know that? And did you know that there are more people who have determined that they're no longer a part of any church and not really a Christian anymore? And do you know how many children and teenagers are in those people's lives? Do you know how little the gospel and the stories of Jesus' love are being shared at home? Because parents and children, they think they know what the most important things are. And those parents are teaching their kids what they think the most important things are. If it doesn't work, talking about marriage, if it doesn't work, just split up, no problem. Accept the scars of personal hurt, shattered dreams, and perhaps the birth of a child who will not have a home with mom or dad and decide to let the chips fall where they may. And at the end of that marriage, mom goes this way, dad goes this way, child is between them both. They don't know what it takes to make a marriage. They don't know what it takes to work through a marriage. They don't know what it takes to talk through issues. They don't know what it is to pray for one another and to watch God work. You wonder why we wonder why we wonder why more people don't come to church. Why more people aren't calling out to God. It's because he's not there. And they're not listening. And they don't care to listen because they want to do their life. They're going to do it their way. They're going to, they're going to follow life as they've been taught at home, follow life as they've been taught at school, follow life as they've watched on TV or in the movies, follow life that their friends are following. And the word of God and the gospel of God and what Jesus wants to do for them is an infinitesimal part of their life. That child or those children will not have learned how two people through marriage teach their children what family is, who will not see how godly parents work through, pray through, talk through, and in cases of failures along the way, will not see how God mends family relationships. So, God says, I can make your life better when you let my love for you be the most important thing in your life. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the most important thing. And I close with the words of Jesus. When anyone who hears about this love and doesn't obey, 
It's like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against the house, it will collapse into heaps of ruins. I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well built. It is not well built without the love of Jesus being the most important thing in our lives. It is well built and will go through any storm when love for God and love for others is most important.